Hello everyone, my name is Mara, and today's case is about Bianca LeBron, who was 10 years old when she went missing from Bridgeport, Connecticut in November of 2001. And just a quick reminder before I get started, that I always try to do the best research and get the most accurate information I can for every single case that I cover. But with that being said, let's go ahead and get into today's case. Bianca Elaine LeBron was born on June 26th of 1991. She was said to have a very outgoing personality and that she had very high self-esteem. Bianca enjoyed dancing and singing to all genres of music. She also loved shopping at Milford Mall and Trumbull Mall, which were both located near her home. In 2001, Bianca was living with her mom, Carmelita Torres, and her stepdad, Angelo Garcia, in Bridgeport, Connecticut. And Bianca was a fifth grade student at Elias Howe School. On the morning of November 7th of 2001, Bianca went to school and it was a completely normal day. But Bianca began telling friends and a teacher also overheard her say that her uncle was going to be picking her up that morning to bring her shopping. And she had asked friends if they wanted to come along, but they said no thanks. That morning at 8.30 a.m., Bianca was seen by witnesses getting into a older model two-tone brown and tan van with tinted windows. The outside of the van was in poor condition, and it appeared to have been sanded in several areas. The driver of the van was described as a Hispanic male. He appeared to be around 20 to 30 years old and stood around 5'8 to 5'11. He had black curly hair styled in a short afro with long sideburns and a beard with brown eyes and a prominent nose. He also had scratches on both cheeks. This man was wearing a long sleeved blue pullover shirt with gap imprinted on it. And he was wearing jeans with an image of the character Fat Albert on the right rear pocket and scuffed brown Timberland boots. It was said he also made no attempt to try to hide his face from witnesses. And the teacher and her friends, nobody stopped and questioned this because she had said that she was going with her uncle. So they all just assumed that that's who was picking her up. And the school did not call Bianca's mom to confirm this shopping story and that her uncle was actually supposed to be picking her up. Bianca's teacher also marked her as absent. But there still was no call made to her home to let them know about this unconfirmed absence. And that afternoon, when Bianca did not return home from school right away, her mom, Carmelita, wasn't initially concerned because there was multiple afternoons after school where Bianca would either go to a friend's house or to a relative's house. So she assumed that Bianca would be home by dinner, but dinner time came and went and by 7 p.m. Carmelita became very worried and she started to go around the neighborhood asking neighbors, friends, if they had seen her. She also checked with relatives, but nobody knew where Bianca was. So this is when Carmelita went to the authorities and reported Bianca as missing. She told police that Bianca had went to school that morning. So this is when police reached out to the school. This is when they learned about the uncle that came and picked her up and how he was supposed to bring her shopping. This is also when they discovered that she had been missing since that morning when she left with this man. Carmelita and other family members were asked if they knew who this man in this vehicle was, but her family told authorities that Bianca did not have an uncle, and they did not know anybody that drove a van of this description. It became clear that Bianca had been kidnapped, more than likely by an adult man that had gained her trust. And rightfully so, the Elias Howe School and the whole school district came under a lot of scrutiny. At this point, the school put in better security procedures and a better attendance policy. And the teacher that had heard Bianca saying that she was going to go with an uncle, but didn't actually look into the details to make sure that this is actually what was supposed to be happening that day, or even to make sure that she was actually supposed to be leaving with this person, was suspended with pay. Then in April of 2002, a suspect emerged. This was a man named Jason Lara, who was 20 years old at the time of Bianca's disappearance. He matched the description of the suspect and also had a friend that had a similar van. One of Bianca's friends, when she was interviewed by police, she told them that Jason Lara was Bianca's secret boyfriend. 
and that she had seen Jason and Bianca kissing before she disappeared. And if this is true, this makes me sick to my stomach. They are 10 years apart. He had no business talking to a fifth grade 10 year old little girl. But it was also said that Jason had left abruptly from Bridgeport in the weeks following Bianca's disappearance. Investigators eventually did end up tracking him down in Florida, but he denied any involvement and I guess they were able to check his alibi. So he has never been charged in her disappearance and there has been no other suspects in her case. After time passed, Carmelita did have Bianca declared dead. So she could file a wrongful death lawsuit against the school. But she personally does still believe that Bianca is alive. Ilya's house school has since been closed and Bianca's dad now lives in Florida. But her grandma does still live in the house that she did in 2001 and Bianca's whole family still holds out hope that she will be found. I just feel like this is one of those cases where if they had called her mom and made sure that she really was supposed to go with this man, that maybe this all could have been prevented. And I'm trying not to judge, but I just don't understand how this teacher could feel comfortable and just let this little girl go without 110% knowing that she was supposed to go with this man. But I hope that Bianca is out there somewhere safe and that she is able to be reunited with her family. Thank you so much for watching today's video. I hope you'll comment and subscribe, and I will see you all next time. Bye. Bianca LeBron was 10 years old when she went missing, and this is what she may have looked like at 27 years old. Bianca is a Hispanic female. She was 4'11 and 115 pounds. She was wearing a green, beige, and brown camouflage shirt, beige pants, black boots, and a dark blue denim jacket. She had brown hair, hazel eyes, and a birthmark on her forehead.